Yeah, I've got a cow on my head. What of it? We're gonna have problems? Are we gonna have problems, you and me? Hey everybody, Peeps here, and welcome back to the final Zelda Month video for 2021. Since I've been doing Zelda Month for so long, naturally I've done a whole lot of Zelda videos. I have done a total of... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 40! counting this one. All those Zelda videos, and I have never once done an entire video on not just my favorite Zelda game, but my favorite game of all time, Majora's Mask. I'm pretty sure I promised I'd do one like three years ago, but I just uh, never got around to it. So sorry, sorry about that, by the way. So I'm finally doing it now. It's actually been a decent amount of time since I've sat down and played all the way through it, so I've really been looking forward to this. And hey, I just did a video on Breath of the Wild where I played through that and had a change of heart on the game. Maybe I'll uh, have a change of heart on the Majora's Mask by the time we're through. I doubt it, but maybe. Let's see. Let's let's do the vi let's start the video now. And before I forget, this is the last day you can get the merch, so check it out with the link in the description below. I promise yours will come with no dog hair on it. What a deal! One Zelda tradition I definitely missed while playing Breath of the Wild recently was being able to name Link. More specifically, being able to name him something really stupid. So say hello to our hero, Penis. <laughs> Uh, that's Mr. Penis. Thank you very much. The funny thing is, if you know the context of this, uh, there's actually another person named Mr. Penis trying to stay at this hotel. If the Zelda series is a nice, happy family eating Christmas dinner together, Dollars play, Dollars did, and we thank them for our food. Then Majora's Mask is the evil stepchild in the corner burning down the Christmas tree. And I've always loved the game for that very specific reason. Because it, uh, burned my Christmas tree down when I was a kid. Yeah. Tragic story, uh, don't have time to tell it on this video though. It's almost a meme at this point to talk about how dark and depressing Majora's Mask is. And I mean, it is. Don't worry, we'll talk more about it later. But besides that, I think the thing that makes it stand out the most is the repeated three day cycle, which is also one of the more contentious things about the game, I think. And it's one of the things I hear people bring up the most when they're criticizing it. And I will admit, there is a lot of waiting around. Oh my god, he's finally coming. <laughs> what is with this freaking walk cycle though? I'd like to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Baiyi. I buy a lot of stuff straight from Japan, things like snacks, toys, stuff like that. Recently I bought some spicy snacks and candy that I was gonna be using for a video on my other channel, for example. And in the past, when I used websites like US eBay or other reseller websites, I would end up paying a lot more than I should have. But thankfully, Baiyi is here to help. With Baiyi, you can purchase things directly from Japanese websites. Places like Yahoo Japan, Mercari, Rakuten, and even things like uh, Japanese Amazon. Naturally, if you do this, it's going to be a whole lot cheaper. Baiyi buys these products off of those websites, ships them to their warehouses, and then they ship them directly to you. And even better, they recently added FedEx for international shipping, which means they can send it to you super fast. Cheaper and faster than similar services? Peeps, I don't believe you! Shut up, idiot! It's true! So if you want to buy some cool stuff you can only get off Japanese websites, then use my link in the description below. And believe it or not, you'll even get a... 2,000 yen first time purchase coupon when you sign up for a new account. Baiyi really is a cool service, so if you wanna check it out, again, use my link in the description below, and thanks to Baiyi for sponsoring. But other than all the masks, <laughs> the three-day cycle has always been my favorite thing about Majora's Mask. At the time of my first playthrough, I don't think I had even seen a game where each NPC had a schedule and you had to be in one specific place at one specific time in order to complete a side quest. I guess it's not that novel of a concept now, but as a kid, I really thought it was cool. And hey, I guess I still do. Of course, that also means you only have three days to beat each dungeon, but you can always play the Song of Time backwards if you need more time. If you're a little baby who sucks, I mean, I do it. Speaking of the dungeons, while there's not very many of them, the ones that are there are pretty solid. I love flying around as a Deku scrub in Woodfall, Snowhead's verticalness is super iconic to me, and Stone Tower Temple is probably one of the best dungeons in the entire series. And, uh, yep, I think that's it. Nothing else worth mentioning. 
My main complaint with the dungeons though, and it's probably my biggest complaint with the entire game, is finding all the stray fairies. There's 15 hidden stray fairies in each dungeon, and if you find them all and return them to the great fairy, you'll get an upgrade. In theory, it's kinda cool, but in practice? It sucks. Most of them are pretty easy to find, but some of them are just so obscurely hidden, it's ridiculous. Especially some of the ones in Snowhead Temple. Why would anyone use a lens of truth in this specific part of this specific room? And even once you do, you jump up these cool looking invisible steps. Aw oh, man, I bet this is gonna be something good. Nope. It's a fairy. Hey, at least it's not the freaking stamps in Twilight Princess. If you do get them though, the rewards are pretty good. The increased magic bar in particular is useful, and the great fairy sword is freaking insane! Hiya! To this grass! <gasps> this thing is like twice the size of Link's body. I feel like the bosses also stand out from the typical Zelda boss fights. There's not really much of a gimmick or formula, it's just here's a boss! F him up! If you get too close to him, you'll be beaten. Eh, I'll be fine. <laughs> And when you kill them, you get their mask. Or I guess I should say their face. You seize their remains. Uh, pretty hardcore. So you just keep their remains in your pocket for the rest of the game. Gross. But my favorite part of Majora's Mask has always been the masks, or more specifically, the side quests. Or more specifically, specifically, the mask side quests. There's 24 in total, and each one has their own quest. There's some that are kind of insignificant to the game overall, like the Mask of Sense that you get from the Deku Butler. I'm not really sure why the Deku are the ones that have this thing, by the way. Here, Link, the Deku people have prepared something special for you. We cut the face off of a pig. Here you go. When I see you, I am reminded of my son. Oh, huh. cool. <laughs> also the Don Gero mask, which is only used to get a single piece of heart. But hey, at least you get to watch Link do this. <laughs> And even better, you can do it again! And then you can do it again! <laughs> Directing so hard right now! Then there's other masks that you're required to get in order to win, like the Gibdo mask. This is by far one of the most depressing parts of the whole game, and that's saying something. This guy, who's obsessed with studying paranormal activity, moved out into the middle of Akana to study Gibdo. But he eventually gets cursed and turns into one himself. So his little daughter locks him in a wardrobe, and she even made a little Gibdo teddy bear for him. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. This part's not just depressing, it's also straight up freaky. Seriously, what the heck is this? I love Nightmare Fuel in my E for Everyone video games. Don't cry, son. He's happy that he's dying. Again. Another mask that you have to get is the Garo's mask, given to you by two drunk guys that you beat in a horse race. I mean, how else would you get a mask, really? Yes, these swell fellows give a mask that makes ancient assassins show up to try and murder you to a child. And the quest ends with them telling you that you can't tell anyone where you got it, insinuating that they know full well how dangerous it is and don't want to be held responsible for your inevitable violent demise. Then there's the two most useful masks, the bunny hood and the stone mask. To get the bunny hood, which makes you run super fast, you have to get another mask, the circus leader's mask. I find it ironic that in order to get the fastest mask in the game, you have to use the slowest mask in the game. And then the stone mask, which makes you invisible to most enemies. You there! Stop! What's going on? Come to me, sweet flesh! Stay safe, citizen. The quest to get the stone mask is one of the funnier ones if you ask me. This freaking guy who gives it to you, who's invisible for some reason, has been sitting here waving his arms around and begging for help for quote, many years. Years and years and years just waving. Hello. Then there's the scariest mask in the whole game. No, it's not the captain's hat, the soul of a fallen captain who died in battle long ago. No, it's not the Camaro mask, a creepy dead guy's protruding face sewed onto some flesh. And no, it's not even the All Knights mask, a mask which prohibits the wearer from falling asleep, which is confirmed by a gossip stone in-game to have been used as a torture device. No, it's the Great Fairy mask. <laughs> 
I've made this joke like eight times on this channel already, and uh, I'm probably gonna do it again. All right, please subscribe. And of course, there's also the main three masks that transform Link into different races. The Goron mask, the Zora mask, and the Deku mask. <laughs> These are all pretty dark because they contain the souls of characters who died. Though it is kind of hard to take this guy's death very seriously. He's literally dying, but he apparently has the energy to perform an entire concert for me before he finally croaks. Also, his songs are pretty balls. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I mean, the songs written on his gravestone are about how Zora punch and swim or whatever. It'd be like Jimi Hendrix writing a song about how he walks with A and joystick, apparently. But hey, at least he taught me well. I think I've just about figured this out. The Goron Mask and Zora Mask, holding the spirits of Darmani and Mikau, or Mikau? However you say it, I still don't know, are a part of the game's storyline, but the Deku Mask is just handed to you at the beginning? So it kind of subtly begs the question, where did the Deku Mask come from? Well, it comes from the Deku Butler's son, AKA the sad little stump thing that you see towards the start of the game. Of course, I feel like a lot of people who haven't even played the game know about that at this point, thanks, I guess, at least in part, due to old YouTube videos like the ones I made back in the day. Definitely depressing, but far, far, Far from the only dark and depressing thing in the game. Of course, another thing I've talked about a hundred times in this game over the years is all the stuff that happens at Romani Ranch, specifically the alien ghost abductions. Well, one thing occurred to me while playing this time that I'd never thought of before. Usually you would go through the whole quest and dialogue with Romani about the ghost aliens before they attack. Still super weird, but at least you're somewhat prepared for it. But there's definitely a chance that you could just show up on Romani Ranch in the first night around 3 a.m and just see it happening. I mean, again, it's weird enough as it is, but with absolutely no context, that would be legit freaky. And the thought that this 100% happened to a bunch of kids playing this game growing up is really, really funny to me. I honestly don't even remember if I've talked about this guy before or not, but one of the most straight up disturbing things to me is the rarely talked about swordsman instructor. He talks all tough for basically the entire cycle, but the last few hours of the final night before the moon crashes, all of a sudden, he's gone missing. I'll be on vacation for a short while. Please don't look for me. Oh, okay. If you hop up and cut the board on the wall, there he is, literally cowering in fear in the corner. Pathetic. It's easy to forget sometimes while playing that the whole freaking world is basically gonna blow up and that everyone you meet is essentially coping with that fact in some way. But the guy that you find once you complete the beach spider house does a good job of reminding you. He begs you to let him have this underground bunker so he can hide out during the moon crash. I mean, I don't think this hole that's like 10 feet in the ground is gonna do you much good, but whatever makes you feel better. But one of the weirdest and darkest things in all of Majora's Mask is, uh, racism? Specifically towards the Deku Scrubs. No scrubs, no scrubs, no scrubs. The pictograph contest? Sorry, humans only. The witch in the swamp is freaking dying, but as a Deku Scrub, she will not let you save her. Ack, now I've gone and done it. I've gone and attracted some weirdo's attention. Holy crap, grandma, keep it to yourself, sheesh. Of course, there's the kids that won't let you in their club. Screw you, racist kids. I'll smack you with my nuts. <laughs> Ow. It's okay that I, an adult, am beating up this child. Uh, he was mean to me. Of course, there's the racist dog that attacks you at the start of the game. And if you pick him up with a mask of truth, you'll see that killing Deku Scrubs is pretty much the only thing he ever thinks about. And they won't even let you compete in the dog races. Actually, I don't think this is a good idea. I mean, look at you. You know what doggies do to trees, don't you? Uh, excuse me? This is absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> Since I've played this game a million times, I tried to go through it and take my time, see if I noticed anything I hadn't seen before, especially considering specific things can happen at specific times based on the specific actions that you take in the three day cycle. And I was kind of surprised at how many new things I did see. I don't even have time to list all of them off here, but I will give a few of the highlights. There's a somewhat obscure building in town near the bomber's hideout, the mayor's residence. If you go left, there's the office with the guards and builders arguing. Uh, those guys are freaky as hell by the way. What is up with their tongues? <laughs> and 
And on the right is the room where you get the Kaife mask. But I never noticed this additional room on the side which contains a living area for the mayor and his family. It even has a room for Kaife who has a picture of his fiance Anju on his desk. I also noticed that they don't have a bathroom. I swear there's only one toilet in this entire city and there's a freaking hand coming out of it. I always thought that Anju's mom was old and senile, but if you go into her room at just the right point, it turns out that she's only pretending to be crazy because Anju's food is disgusting and she doesn't want to eat it. And the creepiest one, if you go back into the Deku Palace before you beat the dungeon, they're freaking boiling the monkey alive. Ah, uh, I think he's dead, honey. <laughs> So after playing the game all the way through again, can I still say that it's my favorite Zelda game? Yeah. Bye! You're the meaning in my life. You're the inspiration. You bring feeling to my life. You're the inspiration. I wanna have you near me. I wanna have you near me. Sweet Wind Waker! <laughs> oh. Next year for Zelda Month, Wind Waker video! I mean, maybe. <laughs> Subscribe! <laughs> Everybody, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Helps me out quite a bit. If you want to see the Breath of the Wild video where I had a change of heart in the game, you can check that out here. Or you can go to my other channel, Peeves, where I opened up the Zelda Game & Watch. And I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello.